Well, Jim, let's get a few more questions in here this week before we wrap things up and before this chair squeaks again. A very popular topic, I don't know if you've seen this, but a lot of people have been wanting to know what you think. I guess Eric Bischoff did a recent interview where he talked about Tony Khan, and several people have sent in these quotes. Have you seen this at all? I saw it and ignored it because I didn't know you were going to ask me about it. So I have not heard his statement, but I would be... uh, uh acquiescent to hearing his comments this was uh this transcription was sent to corny drive through gmail.com from paul in nantwich england and i guess this is in reply yeah, to wait wait antwich nantwich oh england i thought antwich was an offshoot of the manwich well <laughs> i don't know about that but this only it was a, it would be a sandwich made by your aunt. I believe that this was in response to Tony Khan's recent comments about Ted Turner and about Vince McMahon about having more money, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I have more money than you do, so I can do this all day long, and I'm smarter than Ted Turner. But uh, yeah. So Eric Bischoff said, "If Tony Khan were to call me and ask me for any advice, here's what it would be: Don't call me and ask for advice. I'm Eric <laughs> Bischoff. No, no, I, I kid, I kid. <laughs> here's what it would be." Shut up and wrestle, dude. Just put on the best product you can, and you've proven you can. Focus on that. Now, this is weird coming from me, right? The guy who challenged Vince McMahon. I was about to say he wrote a book called Controversy Equals Cash and challenged Vince McMahon to a fist fight. He's also talking about himself again. The guy who gave away their finishes. But here's the difference. I was actually competing with him. I was going head-to-head, real head-to-head. Like, my show started the same time his show started each and every week. And another thing Tony came out and said, quote, and this is him sub-quoting, I should say, we're at the 96th stage of WCW, and we're just going to not make their mistakes. (laughs) Tony, you're inventing some mistakes, brother, by coming out there and constantly comparing yourself and deriding your competition. But not having the willingness, I almost said balls, but not having the willingness to say, let's go head to head, let's really compete, let's see who can get whose market share. That's real competition. Well, now, wait a minute. Uh, there's a little that's, bit more. But, uh, well, but also, but let's put a pause on that. That's not up to Tony Khan either. He can't say just put me on against them because TNT or TBS, neither one would do that because they don't want to fucking kill their new program. So they're not going to put them up against Monday Night Raw. That's what Ted Turner did uh, what, 26 years ago or whatever, and that's only because somebody <laughs> caught him on the right day when he just said, well, hell, okay, and he still had the power to do it. So that's a little misleading. Go ahead. Uh, he's going back to the market chair thing. That's real competition. So I'm a little disappointed in the rhetoric I'm hearing out of Tony, as well as some of the talent. Shut the fuck up until you are actually competing, and you're actually competing favorably. And by the way, Tony, in 1996, I was kicking WWE's ass every week in a real head-to-head competition, not a cosplay competition. Ooh. Um. I I mean, I can't honestly say that I agree with most of that because he uh, Eric is aggrandizing himself and his efforts when he was in a completely different time in a completely different place in a complete, completely different company. Yes, they were competing head to head and viciously with Vince McMahon and the WWF at the time. That is a given. And the competition was much fiercer than it is today. That is a given. Um, having said that, Eric Bischoff suddenly found himself in charge of a wrestling company that had a 20 something year history and had been doing mega business for most of that time until the couple of years before he got put in charge of it. And that was due to the, the, the dark years were due to TBS putting a bunch of people in charge of the wrestling company that didn't know anything about it. Jim Hurd, Kip Fry, blah, blah, blah. Bill Shaw. Bill Shaw. Um, It's also not fair to compare the the 
Attitude Era 90s head-to-head war with this one because, let's face it, the talent was a lot more even. Because at that point in time, not only did Vince have one of the greatest rosters top to bottom that he's ever had, but WCW had an incredible roster from top to bottom, including half of the stars they got, they got from Vince. The star power and the talent on both sides was not only, you know, close to even or certainly competitive, but it was deeper than is possible today because there's just not as as many good main event quality wrestlers today as there was then. <clears throat> there's also, what is it? Is it five times fewer people watching wrestling today than were watching wrestling then? I'm not sure so, the exact number, but obviously both television viewership declines and specifically wrestling viewership declines, yeah. Yes, yeah, no, I'm just talking specifically wrestling. There were at least five times many, five times more people watching pro wrestling in general in the United States, at least as there was, or in, you know, in the 90s as there is now, today. That's That's undisputable. So... You know, Eric Bischoff is giving tips for Ty. I think Tony should shut up because he's coming off like, you know, Richie Rich, a spoiled little rich kid. Where's Cadbury? But Bischoff is not the guy to tell anybody to shut up when he challenged Vince to a fight. And he's right. They were legitimately competing main show to main show. But he didn't do that. The company already had 20 something years of history before he got there. The company already had done major business competitive with Vince in the 80s before he got there. And the company was so deep in talent, and he got them. That's the one thing that Bischoff, and I've always given him credit for this, he's the first one to get the Turner Empire to spend actual money on the company. And then the problem was he got them to spend too much. He got them to spend enough that they started, and they hot-shotted, and they got Hall and Nash and they started doing business, and then he talked them into spending so much more that when they couldn't keep up with bringing that amount of money in, it gave the naysayers in the TBS empire that had always wanted to get rid of the wrestling company the ammunition to do it. When they were only losing eight million bucks, well, to them that was lunch. But when they lost sixty million, then they say, "Okay, now we can get rid of this fucking thing." But the talent was deeper. There were more fans were plentiful. Wrestling was more popular. So yes, he was competing head to head, but he can't give Tony any advice because the the whole thing has changed. And Tony better be happy with beating NXT by a couple hundred thousand people when they were on Wednesday nights because that's right now and for the foreseeable future as close as he's going to get just because of the head start and the worldwide infrastructure that the WWE has. But as we've mentioned, with them trying to throw the fight and Tony doing everything he can to win it, it's it's kind of working out a little even, but there's you know the WWE still much farther ahead. So I think Eric's advice is wonderful fodder for his podcast to see if since Tony's the bell of the ball these days and the most beloved billionaire in the world he's probably going to talk about tony as much as he can to see if anybody will listen to his podcast which by the way i don't think does really any business you know based on what we know but well we'll it's out there on the charts what is it well yeah on the sports charts i think well it must be down low not well (laughs) not near the two biggest shows every single week as a matter of fact the one that i saw this week was kind of uh poetic justice he was down at at number 83 83 i would think that a show that's supposed to be as popular as that one would have a bigger audience that doesn't make any sense well the show is called 83 weeks oh that is true so yeah that is true and that's a free plug Uh, eric we give you a free plug here for your little program. Never let it be said that we, that we want to hog all the listeners. Since we have so many, we'd be glad to <laughs> give you a few. Where, where did our programs come in on the sports chart this week, if Eric was at 83? Uh, pretty much every single week. We're in the number one rated wrestling show on the Apple sports charts every single week. Well, no, I'm not uh, talking about I'm not talking about rest because the wrestling 
chart is a sub. Well, we're not chart, on the wrestling a sub genre, chart. right? But that's why I'm saying we're on the actual sports charts with yes. basketball and football and baseball. Where were we this week when Eric was at 83? Last week, Jim, the peak for Jim Cornette was 18. Yeah. So we were down a little bit. Down a little bit. We're number 18. Eric's number 83. That sounds about right. On the sports charts. You know, if we were on the wrestling charts, if you actually look and, uh, you know, we've actually that done this. That wouldn't be fair. No, because we would actually be the number one and number two show yeah. every single week for the last couple of years based on every other chart that's out yeah, there. Yeah, that's why we don't do because we're not just we're not just wanting to do the romper room stats. We're wanting to we're playing with the big boys here. So we're on the sports chart. Well, the experience number 18. Where's the drive through at your show? It's been a rough week. Thirty four. It was oh, last well, time. Right. Eric's yeah. at 83. 83. All right. 83. But, you know. Well, maybe we should do something on the wrestling charts to show some people should some real muscle that power. That wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair to, to anybody them. else. But no, that's what I'm saying. Because if we actually applied to the wrestling chart, we would be one and two every week, and it wouldn't give anybody else a chance. So let them have the wrestling chart, and we'll take the sports chart. I'll say there are certainly a lot of shows out there. They all seem to be somewhat connected. Who really seem to be pretending like there's a big audience for them. But when you actually look at the numbers and the YouTube, it just almost seems like a mythical audience. I don't know. Yeah. Is mythical? Mythical. Mythical, mythical baby. Mythical, How would Dusty Rhodes say that, Jim? He would say it like mythical. It's mythical, baby. It's mythical. It do not exist. <laughs>